apologies as my phone keeps ringing every single time I'm about to start making this message. But my message is to you, Azania. It is to you, the children of South Africa. And it is from us, your big brothers. Speaking to you because of experience. There is nothing new that South Africa is going through that we've never seen before. Our parents, once upon a time, very content to continue to serve the white man, to continue to be slaves of the white man, and to continue to earn money from debt for the sale of their resources. Once upon a time, our parents thought that success was selling their children's futures, their children's heritage, their children's land and resources to the white man for them to be able to drive nice cars, have TVs, and send their children to expensive schools. But today Zimbabwe has had to pay the price for the comfort that our parents had. There is no revolution without suffering. There is no revolution in which the people do not lose for a certain time in order to build for their children's futures. Some great man once said that a generation has got to wear overalls and they've got to use shovels for the future, future, future generations to wear suits. The problem with you, South Africa, is that you are content with buying BMWs on credit, content with designer clothes, designer fashions, and driving on beautiful roads, while 60% to 70% of the rest of the population live in poverty to support your fake middle class lives. And the reason why this fake middle class life is encouraged is that every single time that you take credit to buy those beautiful cars, to buy those beautiful clothes, you are supporting Western businesses. You are supporting European car companies, Japanese car companies, and you are supporting retailers that are Europeans. You are going into debt so that your resources, your land, continues to be controlled by the white man for the benefit of the white man not knowing that you're eating into your children's futures. When your resources go and you get in return a BMW on credit for which you're going to pay a very high interest rate, when you give away your resources and your land so that you can get a loan to buy a house in a complex, to buy a house in an estate, who do you think is going to pay for all this consumption that you're going through now? When you spend money on champagnes, scotch whiskey, and you spend money on the Deb and Julys, whose products are you buying and whose future do you think that you're eating into? It's time that you guys become a little more smarter than this book knowledge that is based on ignorance. You are spending into your children's futures. Your resources are no longer what they used to be, but they're getting depleted. For a hundred years, South Africa was the biggest producer of gold in the world, but today you're outproduced by China. For a hundred years, this country was the biggest producer of diamonds, but today you're outproduced by Botswana and Russia. All this is a sign that your resources are becoming depleted. And as they become depleted, the white people begin to consolidate their capital and move it to other jurisdictions. They are beginning to look for new destinies to take the money that was made off your resources, off your ancestor's slave labor, and off your stupidity. And it's now being taken to other destinations. Our parents did the same. They sold our economy. They didn't build an economy. They got salaries, they bought cars, they took us to good schools. But they never made sure that they built capital. But even though our parents were as bad as your generation, during that time, they built black banks, they built black insurance. And you might not understand the importance of black banks and black insurance, but it is the insurance that collects monies and creates a surplus that can start locally owned banks. It's through locally owned banks that you can be able to have your own telecommunications industry, your own farming industry, your own industry because you can finance it on your own. South Africa does not have a single black bank. South Africa does not have a single black insurance. You are reliant on white capital, which is European capital. 
And then you wonder why they cannot give money to up and coming black entrepreneurs. You don't own the capital. It is owned by your competitors and they will not allow black entrepreneurs to rise if you are going to compete with Western production, Western goods and build your own industry. When will you wake up to know these things? The factors of success that you use to measure your success in South Africa today, which is the roads that you've got, the infrastructure that you've got, without looking at how that is going to gear you into producing for the future, is where your error is. In economics, in accounting, we've got something called gearing. And gearing is determined by ownership. Ownership of the factors of production. Ownership of the capital that you're going to employ in order to make wealth. All your capital, all your assets, all your resources are not owned by you. They're owned by foreigners. So you have no gearing capacity. You have no gearing. Instead, what you have is debt while somebody else owns your factors of production. So they're reliability. It's time you start understanding that the ownership of your assets, the ownership of your resources is the only gearing that is going to build a better future for your children. Zimbabwe today has its issues, but it owns its land, its assets, everything that it requires for future gearing to produce. You guys need to wake up. This academia that is not based on practice, this academia that is based on being brainwashed makes you similar to a rat that is running in a cage that thinks that it knows the world just because it knows how to run in the wheel. The world is a totally different place. You have to build black business. You have to build black capacity, black capital, and black expertise in order to grow your children's futures. As I speak to you now, South Africa is growing at 0.2%. Zimbabwe is growing at 2.8%. This is a white European controlled economy growing less faster than a black controlled economy that's under sanctions. I don't know if you're smart enough to understand what that means, but that's an indictment on this economy that you show off about. You have shacks. People do not have clean water. People do not have sanitation. Black people are still suffering and living the lives that they live during apartheid in the country with the richest resources in the world. 15 trillion plus worth of resources, but you cannot build housing for your people. Then you, the middle class, to drive BMWs, want to maintain the status quo without understanding that your resources are being depleted. You need to be smarter than that. And this indictment of Zimbabweans, without realizing that Zimbabweans own what is theirs, this indictment of Zimbabweans, without you learning from them as your bigger brothers who have been through this struggle way before you, is an indictment on your intelligence and your indictment on understanding the importance of Pan-Africanism. You are the weakest link in Pan-Africanism. It is time that you get on the bandwagon and understand that the ownership of resources is unequivocal. The ownership of our land is unequivocal. Spending on goods, on Western goods, while depleting our children's savings is not smart. Slavery to the white man while he depletes your resources and gives you the peanuts is not smart. You will get to a time where you will regret this. Fortunately for us, we had a government that was smart. In as much as our parents were as foolish as you, our government gave us education. They developed a black capital class. That black capital class sabotaged the country and left with white capital, but at least our government created a black industry. Black banks, black insurance, black hotel, hotel groups, and uh, 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 black farmers. They created an entire sector of black business people. Our telecommunications industry is owned by black people. This is something that is absent in this country. Even your food does not belong to you. It is owned by the Americans, by the Swiss and the Germans. You don't even own your own seeds. And the day that you fall out with the Americans, you will not have food. It's time that you wake up to these realities and stop thinking that you know better than people that are older than you. By the time you realize what I'm saying, chances are you will be in a civil war in this country. 
Because it's coming if you don't change the current situation of things. It is coming to a time where the poor will need to overthrow you, the middle class, and your white bosses if you don't change the circumstances and the situation of this country. The reason why you've got violence during your protests is because a man has to buy a tomato, a potato, onion, every single thing that a person needs to survive in South Africa needs to be purchased. In Zimbabwe, the poor can grow their own food in their own backyards. They can grow their own food on vacant pieces of land and they will be able to eat. What Zimbabweans fight for is sneakers, cell phones, cars, and a better life. But at least they've got access to the basics. You don't have access to the basics. That is why Marikana happened. People can't even eat without 10 rand in their pocket. That is why situations like the service protests that happen in this country happen. Because people are hungry without money. It's also the reason why men and women have got to go onto the street and do crime in order to survive. Because the factors of production and survival were taken from them. It's time you wake up, guys. And I won't stop speaking because I'm an African. And I love you. And be, unless you stop being the weak link, Africa has got no future.